In today's video, I am looking at the progress that my El Choc Corvette has made over the last two to three months, and I'm gonna convert it to a larger support so that it can continuously mature. I'm still not used to filming at my new place. I'm struggling to find like good spots to film in um, where I can put you far back enough so you can see everything, but at the same time, uh, have good light. So suppose the light situation is not ideal. I'd love for it to come from the front. It comes a little from the side, but I'm sure we'll make it work. So this is my El Choco Red. And two, two and a half months ago, I got this plant as a small tissue cultured seedling and I popped it on this grow vertical moss pole. So let's have a quick look at what happened. <laughs> Brand, <laughs> let's have a quick recap. At what, let's have a quick look at what happened uh, two, two and a half months ago. Before we continue, let's talk about today's sponsor, AG1. Health is such a big topic and unfortunately, sometimes we don't really think or talk about it until our own health is impacted. AG1 is a comprehensive all-in-one foundational nutrition that helps you take ownership of your health, no matter how busy your day is. It has 75 of the highest quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, and is manufactured to the strictest quality standards. AG1 conveniently combines the benefits of many other health products, such as multiminerals, multivitamins, pre and postbiotics, immunity supporters, and so on. As we know from growing plants, consistency is key. And the same applies to health. AG1 is an effortless daily habit that is easy to make work for you. Building habits and routines is important in creating consistency. For the last month, I replaced my morning coffee with AG1. And I drink it while checking my plants every morning. It's my version of self-care in the morning before I get started with my busy day. Most importantly, AG1 is NSF certified for sport, which is the gold standard for quality ingredient nutrition. It's also plant-based and to my surprise, it doesn't even taste bad at all. It kind of tastes sweet. There's notes of pineapple in it. And after drinking it for a month, I, I really crave the taste of this in the morning like I used to crave my coffee. Tap the link in the description below to get a one year supply of immunity supporting vitamin D3 and K2, as well as five travel packs so you can enjoy your AG1 on the road or really anywhere you are. Thank you AG1 for sponsoring this video and supporting my immunity, but now let's get back into the video. Anyway, I've got this teeny tiny El Choco Red over here. It was a tissue cultured plant and it came in just moss. It is a mess. It has, I think like three or four shoots. It's very common for tissue culture that they just start reshooting in like so many little spots. So I think there's three or four shoots on here, but look at this. Can you see these little roots sticking out? I want to get that on a moss pole ASAP. Now, because it is such a tiny plant, I don't want to put it on one of my big moss poles just yet because I want to keep that one in my IKEA cabinet. So this one has been living in my IKEA cabinet since I got it delivered. It was shipped to me from WA. So I was like, okay, it's gone through a bit of a journey. WA is Western Australia, by the way, I'm sorry. Um, so it's a bit of a journey to, to get here. So, I thought, you know what, I'll give it its best chances of surviving by putting it in my prime spot in the IKEA cabinet. And it's really loved it. It's grown two leaves so far already. But I'm thinking if I want this to mature any further, I should start getting it on a moss pole. And at the same time with the moss pole, I'm propagating it. This is a plant that is still fairly sought after in Australia. We only recently got this tissue cultured. And because we can't import plants, this plant was pretty much non-existent for the last two years. So I have plenty of friends who would like a cutting. So I want to propagate it straight away. I was actually having dinner with friends when we discovered this one on the, on the, on the website. And we were like, oh my God, let's get our hands on it. And we were all buying it online. And I actually snapped up the last one. So there was actually only one in stock. And... I was just the fastest. We didn't know there was only one in stock, but when my friend tried to check out, it was sold out and I literally just got my order confirmation. So I feel like I should give my friend a little cutting of this. So I want to propagate it ASAP. So I just got a little piece of wire so I can <clears throat> kind of pin this to the moss pole. 
Okay, let me bring you a bit closer. Can you see these roots here? Can you see these roots? Yeah. So I just want to pin that to the moss pole so that can make contact. And because the moss pole is see-through, I will actually see when this was successful. So that's very good. Plus, so this is a grow vertical. I just cut it in half to make it a bit smaller. Plus I can now just put my little clip on. So these are the little clips that I use in my Ikea cabinet and I can just hang it back in my Ikea cabinet with the moss pole. I have one other moss pole in my Ikea cabinet and honestly, it just basically never dries out because it's so nice and humid in there. So definitely shows that the moss pole is best used in a humid environment unless you're willing to consistently um, keep it moist. So the more humid the environment is that the moss pole is located in, the less work from your end. You know, I've seen people make like holes in the pod and then cable tie the pole to the pod and so on. I honestly just pot it up. It just stays in there and I can hang that up from there. I've done that plenty of times. Now, nothing ever happened. If something happens one day, it is totally my fault and I was basically asking for it. So, so yeah, I don't recommend that you do that, but I've done it and I've noticed no issues with it. So, hmm. All right, and this is it now. So let me show you. Actually, this is an understatement of what it looks like right now because I actually cut off two vines already. So see how, um, so there's currently three vines on here. Number one, number two, the big one, and then number three. So there was two more of these smaller vines that were just kind of sticking out and didn't really attach to the pole. I have already cut them and I gave them to some of my friends when they came to visit from Queensland as a little present. So I'm really happy with the progress over here, specifically with this large main stem over here. And you can really see that new leaf that is coming out now. So the plant has already changed from growing. Um, so, you know, when plants are juvenile, they usually grow a leaf out of the, la out of the petiole of the previous leaf. Like, like this one over here, right? So this leaf over here came out of the petiole from the previous leaf. When they mature, they start growing via caterpill, which has happened over here. So you can see this is the latest leaf. And that new growth point is not, can you see that? I don't know. That new growth point is not directly coming out of the petiole. Instead, it came via a caterpillar. So that's a sign that the plant is maturing and I don't want to lose that sort of progress. So it I want to let that plant continuously grow up its pole, but it's obviously growing out of its pole a little bit. But like the other thing, I'll come back again. The reason, the reason why I put it on one of these grow vertical poles is because they encourage nice root growth. So you can see all of these roots over here. Ignore the green bits, that's algae buildup because this was in my IKEA cabinet with pretty much perfect conditions. So algae is thriving, but it's not harmful to the plant. Oh, and by the way, look at these sexy backsides. So basically, even though I only potted up one plant, the plant multiplied itself. It's quite common with tissue cultured plants, especially, especially if I give them the perfect conditions to thrive in. So this plant has been living in my IKEA cabinet with very consistent everything, my right? Consistent temperatures, it's usually much warmer in the cabinet than it is outside due to the grow light that's in there. The grow light is consistent. It gets the same amount of light every day um, and it's on for 12 hours and then off for 12 hours. It has high humidity. It's usually over 90% of humidity in there. And most importantly, there is no fluctuations, right? And so the humidity doesn't drop and rise uh, all the time. There's um, the temperatures don't drop and rise too much as well. Like it's very just mm, consistent, right? And plants love consistency. This plant even had thrips. Actually, all of the plants in the cabinet had thrips. And you can see that by this leaf over here. It has a lot of thrips damage. Um, I, I used, oh my baby, um, what is it called again? I used Comfidor spray, one application, and I haven't seen any since. Um, of course, to keep your, and to be honest, normally I don't really get thrips often. Usually, um, 
I would take these plants and just give them a good spray every week. Just with water, clean, healthy leaves have an easy time prevent or like fighting pests off naturally. But while I was moving and so on, I definitely just neglected some of that a little bit. I just did the bare minimum, aka watering, um, but I really didn't go above and beyond. So I think that's why the thrips had a good time kind of uh, escalating in there a little bit. But again, and you know, just wanted to let you know, like, no, my plants are not pest free. Like I constantly have pests. It's not about eradicating pests. It's really just staying on top of them and also setting expectations, like having realistic expectations. You will never have a pest free environment unless you get rid of all of your plants. All right, so today what I wanna do is like, normally what I would do now is I would take it off the moss pole, I would propagate it in between the nodes and so on, but I don't wanna lose my progress. I don't, wanna, I, I don't want this to go back to juvenile. So in hindsight, I should have probably given it a larger moss pole, but you know, I didn't realize it was actually gonna mature that nicely. I was actually just expecting for that one vine to grow up and then I cut it into three to four bits so I, got, um, I, got, uh, so I can propagate it and um, pass it on to some of my friends. But the plant did all of that by itself. So I already passed on cuttings to the friends that I promised a cutting. So all of this um, can stay mine. Actually, I cut one more for another friend, but the rest is gonna stay mine. So I'm gonna keep it as it is. And I'm going to, oh my God, I think there's another shoot coming. There might be another fourth shoot coming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give this a larger moss pole. So this over here is the, like a mini, actually I cut this moss pole myself. Like I made it a bit shorter so it fits in my IKEA cabinet. I wanna put it on one of these grow vertical pros. Now, and I talk about these Grow Verticals a lot, but Grow Vertical is the name of the company that makes these. I don't make them myself. I just get them from Grow Vertical and then I assemble them. But it's basically a plastic sheet. This one is recycled plastic and then it's a netted um, coated wire mesh at the front and you just cable tie them together. You can make the mesh shorter or wider and then depending on that, um, you know, the plastic is going to be more flat or it's going to be a little bit deeper. And then, you know, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. I went with the regular setup, so it's not quite as deep, but it's a little bit wider because I have three plants on here, so I want them to be able to spread out. If you make it deeper, then you just have more moss, but less surface area, so it would mean that you would need to water even less. But because it's in the IKEA cabinet and it's always high humidity, the moss hardly ever dries out in there anyway. First things first, let's take this out of its pot. And you can see I don't secure the pot in here at all. It's really just held in there by, I don't know. And also, as you can see, there's actually pretty much no root system inside the pot. The mix might have been a little bit too chunky for such a small plant, but it doesn't matter because the plant has grown a really decent root system into the moss pole. Huh? If it doesn't have a decent root system, it would not give me leaves like this. So whatever I'm doing is perfectly fine. But I might consider giving it a smaller, uh, uh, like a slightly less chunky mix. Now let me take the plastic off of the back over here. And I've never done this before. I've never like converted a grow vertical moss pole into a larger grow vertical moss pole. So I'm just gonna wing it. I think by now we're used to that. Alrighty, here it is without the plastic. You can see it has some nice roots down there and I do not want to disturb them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll take, I'll take this cutting over here. It's basically like a little piece of, uh, little one of the secondary ones. It has cute little roots over here but the roots kind of grew off the pole so they didn't attach. So I'll just pop that in water and then it's a great little propagation for a friend. This I'm not gonna touch. What I'm gonna plan on doing is I'm just gonna cut a gap in the mesh over here and then I'll just slide that in. That's the idea. And I, do, I, I don't know, I can't see how this could not be a success. So let's have a count. One, two, three, four, five, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so six by 21, what do I have here? One, two, three, four, eight. Okay, so here and here. Okay, 
one, two, three, four, five. Did I count 22 or 21? I think 22. Let's just go with 22. Actually, let's go with 21 because I can always cut another one. Okay, I need the proper tools. One moment, please. I don't know if that's a stupid idea or, if, or genius. I suppose proof is in the pudding. Right now it looks a bit stupid. I feel stupid. Yeah. Okay, so this should match this. Yep, it was definitely... I think it was 21. I think I got it correct. So I have this gap here now. Obviously it looks stupid. Now I'm gonna... Pop this in here, and now I'm gonna cable tie. Oh, it's actually a bit thicker than I expected. I really don't want to disturb anything in here. So I take some of the moss out at the top because it wasn't really needed. Or it wasn't really occupied yet. I think it's gonna be fine. I reckon it's gonna be fine. So, and I am aware that you can't see this really well. So let me bring you closer. All right, let's see how that goes. So now I'm just trying to connect the old mesh to the new mesh. The first one's gonna be the hardest. Ah, come on. Once I've got this one, it has a little bit more structure already. Okay. You know what I mean? I think I think this is going to be successful and I don't need to I don't need to connect every single piece of the grid. I'm just going to connect it in two three spots. All right. So we've got this. All righty, the next challenge that we have besides the lighting situation is I now need to fill these little gaps with moss because my moss pole is a little, the new moss pole is a little bit larger and I don't want to have gaps. Now I usually like to fill my moss, my grow vertical poles before I close them, but for obvious reasons that wasn't possible today because I had to cut it all open again anyway. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of moss and I'm just gonna poke it through with a chopstick. Now, of course, you want to have enough moss in here so that it can retain moisture. Moss is the bit that retains the moisture. So the less moss you've got in here, the more often you'll need to water because there's nothing that can retain the moisture. But at the same time, plants also love aeration. So you don't want to pack it too tightly so that the plant or like the roots don't get any oxygen through. That's why I like to pack it beforehand because I feel like with this like stuffing technique, you're very likely to stuff it too tight. All right, now I just need to fill the top. Now normally, I fill my moss balls completely with moss all the way to the top because that makes my watering much easier. Plus a lot of plants actually grow roots out the top of the moss pile. Now, because this plant is going to go back into my IKEA cabinet and the IKEA cabinet has such great conditions, it will encourage a lot of algae growth, right? So to the less moss I've got in there, the less moss can just accumulate algae. So I think I'll just fill this a little bit at a time as the plant grows up. Also because the IKEA, so the other reason why I like to usually fill my moss poles all the way from the beginning is it makes watering so much easier. So if I water from the top, the water is just gonna drain down the moss pile as per gravity, which means if I water the full moss pile and the full moss pile is made out of moss, the bottom of the moss pile is gonna dry out really, really slowly. The top is gonna grow out first. Now, if I only fill it to the, to, to the halfway point, then basically the halfway point is 
the top of my moss pile. So if I fill it to exactly where the plant is, then that bit is always going to dry out first. So I'm always going to fill a little bit above where the plant is growing so that when I water it, this bit is going to dry out first and then it's slowly going to dry out. Um, but again, in the IKEA cabinet, I'm not so worried about it drying out because it has perfect conditions. Okay, let me assess if I'm happy with this. Push that. I think I'm pretty happy with this. So, one moment, let me clean up my mess because it's always good to operate in a clean space. Excuse me, sir. Can I get my chair back, please? Do you want this chair? Come here, go to this one. Okay, so here it is. I'm very happy with it. Oh my God, look how beautiful that looks in the sun. In the, in the back. Ooh, hoo, hoo. That is beautiful. So let me pot this up. Oh, hang on. First of all, let's take the little cutting. It's actually super cute. And I'll pop that in water. Actually, let me take that last leaf off. So put it in water. So two notes are in water. Happy days. And now let me pot this up. So the last time I identified it was a little too fine. Uh, too chunky. Put a bit. So it's my normal aeroid mix as always. To be honest, it's so chunky. I don't really have the desire to do anything about it. Now, obviously before it was in a smaller pot. Now it's in a 14 centimeter pot, which also means that the pot is a little bit deeper, which means that anything from here below will be inside the aeroid mix. So I'm gonna cut any leaf because they're just gonna rot anyway. So then here it's a bit of a mess, but there's like lots of little noids over here. They're all gonna appreciate being inside the mix. Um, and hopefully they'll grow roots to show me their appreciation. All right, I fill it up with aeroid mix and I'm totally not going to listen to my own advice. It's going to be as chunky as always. Um, the, to be honest, should I even put a pot on there? You know what? Screw this. What I'm going to do is I'll leave it. I don't want a pot for this one, not yet. Change of plans. I'm gluing these leaves back on, just kidding, they're gone. But actually change of plans. I've actually decided I wanna keep this inside my Ikea cabinet. And I wanna keep it inside my Ikea cabinet because it has such a good time in there. So why fix what's not broken? Also, it's going into the colder season over here, so. It's not the best time for it to get used to a different environment because the different environment, aka all the environment outside of the cabinet, is just not perfect for the tropical plants at the moment. Like the ones behind me, they're used to that environment, so they're fine, but because this one just came out of the perfect conditions, I'd rather put it back in there. But I'm not gonna give it a pot because there's not really any roots for the pot anyway. So it's just gonna make it heavy and kind of annoying hanging in the cabinet with the pot. This way it's gonna be so much easier to just hang there and quite clearly, like there are no roots over here. I mean, I'll definitely, when it needs to move out of the cabinet, I'll give it a pot just so it has something to stand on. But for now, let's just keep it that way and see if it likes it. I have done this experiment once before and you probably haven't seen the final video yet because I think it's due like a couple of videos after this one. But I have had, I've had, I've experimented before with growing plants without a pot at all. And it wasn't even inside the cabinet and it was fine. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling experimental today. So I reckon that's it. Also make sure it makes the video a little shorter. So let's just put it back in the IKEA cabinet and I suppose we check in in a couple of months time. I do house plant tours all the time, so I'll make sure to uh, keep pointing this one out whenever we can. All right, let's put it back in the cabinet. Okay, that's the cabinet. So it was living here before. 
Now that might be a little bit more challenging given the pole is much larger. Wow. Okay, I love this idea. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, let me show you what I've done. So because the pole is really tall, I didn't, like if the pole starts here, the plant is really only at the bottom. I want this to be uh, closer to the light. And now you can really see how beautiful these leaves are as well. Perfect. So what I've done, I've got this magnetic hook and excuse how dirty my cabinet is. I've got this magnetic hook at the top. So I just, because the thing is made from metal. So it's hanging here now. So it's in like prime position, kind of wedged in the corner, if you know what I mean. And no pot. So when I water, I just need to make sure that I put like a little bowl underneath for, to catch the dribble. But yeah, so we've got plant number one with this new growth over here. Plant number two, which I just chopped over here. Uh, you see that? Yep, you can see that cut right here. That's plant number two. And then that's the main plant over here. So, happy days. It was obviously a little bit chaotic, but I hope we're used to it by now. Um, so really, I just wanted to show you a couple of things with this video. Number one, if you get a small plant, get it onto a grow vertical or any sort of vertical growing pole as soon as possible. If I would have popped that on a piece of wood, well, the wood wouldn't have given me all of these roots. And you saw there was no root system in the pot. The plant survived, like the plant is living, the plant is thriving, hey baby. The plant is thriving purely based on the roots that were inside the pole. So you need to make sure that you fill your pole with a growing medium, my preferred growing medium is moss for these poles. So get your small plants on one of those as soon as possible. It will give you a amazing growth. Plus this is already the third cutting and the other two were the same size, the third cutting. So obviously I gave them away to my friends, but I could have easily sold them and made my money back on the investment that is that plant already, right? So do it rather sooner than later. And now it's a little bit counterintuitive because especially when you get a new plant, and especially if it's like a plant that's been on your wish list for a long time and this plant has been on my wish list for two to three years before I got it, you want to keep it all to yourself. You're like, I don't want to cut my plant. I don't want to divide it. I want it all. It's me. It's my plant. But the earlier you do this, the earlier you start cutting it, the earlier you start propagating it, the earlier you have multiplied them and then the earlier you can start growing your own plant again. So this is my own plant now and I'm just going to keep growing that. So yep, so that, number one, get it on a plant, uh, get it on a grow pole as soon as possible. Don't be afraid to propagate really early on in the stage of the, the plant, especially if you want to get your money back. And then third of all, don't be afraid to try new things. There's not always a plan. I don't always have a plan. I just wing things. It's all about trial and error. And as long as you give the plant great environmental conditions, so you give it the humidity it wants, the light that it wants, the, the water that it wants, you f feed it with a, a new plant nutrient, right? Like as long as you do all of that, then your care is not so important. Like the, you saw, like that medium that I put in that pot, it would it not matter what medium I put in that pot. I could have put freaking styrofoam in their pot, like the plant didn't need the pot, right? So the medium is not making the huge difference, right? Yeah, it can make a difference, but most importantly, give the plant good conditions and the plant will kind of adapt to whatever you provide it with, obviously within limits. And also don't be afraid to try something new. Very often, if you try something new, actually amazing things happen from it and you learn something and even if it doesn't go well, you definitely would have learned something from it. I hope I encourage you to start growing your plants up moss poles. And if you're interested in these grow vertical poles, I'll link them in the description. And I also have a discount code, Sydney Plant Guy, 
for 10% off any supports um, and they do ship internationally. So make sure to check out Grow Vertical down below. Also make sure to give them a follow on Instagram and I would love for you guys to support small companies like Tim's but if you can't then you can totally try and you know make your own poles um, very, in a very similar way as well. Ultimately there is no one way of constructing a moss pole despite the fact what some people on the internet trying to sell you, there is no superior pole over anything else. It, is, it just really depends on how much effort you want to put on crea in creating them and how much effort you want to put in maintaining them, right? So there is definitely a perfect moss pole for your needs, but your needs might be different to mine. So you might need to try it out a little bit and find which poles work well and which don't. I personally find the Grow Vertical Pulse to work really, really well for propagations, for anything that really likes a water retentive mix. Uh, but I do love my Open Moss Pulse as well for anything that requires a little bit more uh, aeration with the roots um, and so on. But I've got a full video on, um, on me comparing Moss Pulse as well. All right, Brad really wants food, so I'm gonna wrap it up now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this informative and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Food?